This is John Walton, and you're listening to the Power Play Point Podcast with the Blue Lighter on Point and Anna Knox. Here's Wilson, and on the right circle, they score! Hello, welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. This is your host, the Blue Liner on Point, talking to you live to tape from downtown Glen Burnie, Maryland, and it is quarter after five-ish or so on another Sunday afternoon in Caps fandom. And okay, well, I look, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do too good of a job hiding it, but uh, we all saw the game last night and. Trust me, I had a lot of venting done with um, myself, my family, and some uh, Twitter and Facebook friends. And yeah, we got it all out of our system. So um, if if I sound overly cheery, that may be why. But um, yeah, we all saw what happened and, and what resulted. So I'm, I'm not going to make any bones about that. But I mean we're we're still we're still caps fans and so that that's that's how that's how we need to handle it we're we're still fans of the team and we're still going to watch so uh and my partner in crime in watching caps fans is back and fully recovered thank god from her non-covid illness it is the one and only mermaid live from centerville virginia anna knox yes Hello on this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Sunday. I don't know, Gil, do you do you go outside on days like this and and just embrace the, the gorgeous if weather? If it's good, yeah, if it's if it's a nice day like that, yeah, I I'll uh nice and sunny and warm. I'll I'll go out, take a little walk. Yeah. Yeah, today was just feel I'm like right on the deck and I don't know. It was just it it was it was good. Like you said, last night's game, it was rough. But you know what? I got an OV bobblehead. Did you nice. see my picture? You sw- How did you swing that? Oh, my God. So Stephanie, my like bestie in crime as well, um, her husband and son decided to uh, purchase season ticket holders, ticket from a friend, whatever, and like, you know, we haven't gone all season and we're going to splurge and we're going to do this. And it just so happened to be that night. And so they got three of them and three hats. And she's like, oh, yeah, I've got one for you. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> I was like, so I wasn't expecting that. Like, like she's such an amazing friend. And, and that, so that was like a very, very awesome surprise yesterday. Um because I had seen, you know, like we always see the Joe B and Locker ones. And I've obviously I've got my Tommy one. Um, mm-hmm. But this one is the counter, but I'm afraid to open the box. <laughs> I'm like, do, do, do I open something like this or do I keep? Like, I'm not one, you know, who collects things that's like, I'm going to retire off of this one day. Because um, <laughs> that'll never happen. Well, that's, I mean, that's we, why... That's why most people get two if they can. One one to keep in the box so it stays in mint condition forever. I know. And one I, I just, one to open so they can a- actually have fun with it. Which I don't understand, like how people still do that when we look back at like all the toys that we played with in the, in the eighties that are worth a shit ton now. I'm like, I don't think any parent at the time who was, you know, standing in line for um, a Cabbage Patch kid was like, oh. Well, I could barely get one, but I'm going to get two because maybe in so many years it'll be worth something, which is weird because I do have mine still, but (laughs) not in the original packaging. Um, But yeah, so I have this uh, amazing counter, but I am like, I don't, I I, I would never sell it. I mean, I know people who are, who have already putting it on eBay and whatever. I'm like, I'm just, I'm not that person, but 
I'm like, if I open Pandora's box, <laughs> um, <laughs> is it going to be a good thing? Or do I just leave it and not use the counter? But the counter is kind of cool. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll just be like, hey, at this point, nothing, what else could go wrong? Let's just open it up and see what happens. Um, yeah, what a cool surprise. It just it totally it totally made my day for sure. You you should post a picture of that sucker on, on, I did. on the page. You I did? did. Yeah. Oh wait, maybe How it's did I miss that? Though? Did it How not? How the hell have... did I miss that? Yeah, no, I put it I put it up there and um oh my god, did I miss maybe I didn't put on PowerPoint. How is that possible? Oh my gosh, I didn't. I just okay, put it on my regular. I'm looking through Okay. I'm gonna do it right now. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I missed it because how is that I, I don't even possible? The, I'm seeing yeah. all kinds of pictures, but <laughs> not, not the bobblehead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you tell me. There's like, a, you go look at it and be like, definitely post. There's or... that stupid picture of me with with the bag of Milano cookies. Oh, I love that. Come on now. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, I guess I got some explaining to do there, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Well, there was more, more explaining that had to be done on the, uh, with the wings the other night. <laughs> the wings? Right when you ordered buffalo wings. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh, okay, that. I, okay. I did read what you said. That but stuff. I, okay. When yeah, I saw that, yeah, I was I'll, like, wow. Oh, trust me. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll talk about that. Just, just in an effort to try and keep things fun. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see it. I don't know if, if it just got blocked or just dropped or what the hell happened, but yeah, I don't, I'm going to put I, it up I, now. I'm sorry. You know what? I did okay. realize. No, I no, I, it, it's it went, fine. It went to just my regular, um, Facebook page. Okay. There you go. It's there now. Okay. That's cool. On top of it, which I don't wear baseball caps because it looks stupid on me, but I'm like, mm, but it's cat caps attire. But look at how cool that is. I mean, and then the sides of it say like, you know, number one draft pick in 2004. And it talks about his his awards, excuse me, on like the sides of the box and stuff. So I'm like, oh, my God. But again, I haven't opened it because who knows what will happen. <laughs> you you might want to. Well, it sounds like the stuff on the box by itself is, is cool enough. So you mm -hmm. may want you may want to keep it um in the box just, just for the hell of it just to see how much it turns out to be worth later on i mean my god because i'm like as a teacher right now the idea of having to continue this profession for like <laughs> another 20 25 years <laughs> is like oh my god but if someone was like i would pay a shit ton of money for that ovechkin bobblehead <laughs> okay have it go yeah, yeah for real Spelled my last name K N O S. To check out <laughs> when you write and... the check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So that, that was the highlight. Obviously, not not the yesterday's game, but whatever. Yeah. No, that was that. I I didn't I did not know that uh, you'd actually scored one of those. So yeah, that, that's Crazy. very cool. So, uh, okay. So. Um, all right. So the food stuff. Um, so if, if you haven't been checking out the Facebook page, um, what what we're talking about is, OK, so last it started last week and we didn't get a chance to talk about it too much because we didn't really do a recap of any of the games, except because there were too many of them, mm -hmm. except for the Minnesota game. So we I had our we, guest host. Yeah, we had, of course. Uh, yeah, we had, had our very special guest, uh, Sammy, on. But it started with the Buffalo game. And yeah, I got this idea in my head that I figure, okay, well, let's get some extra voodoo mojo going, whatever. By, you know, I used to do this thing that Bernie Deal called yeast mode, the year of the, the year of the, uh, the Cap Stanley Cup run in 2018. And, um, it was these stupid little stunts that I would do. It was it, one year I did something, one series I did something with uh, uh, blue jackets and and a blue drink. And then uh, when when they beat the lightning, I, I chugged a, a bottle of Gatorade lightning or something like that. So this was along the lines of that. But I, I got my inspiration um, for this from, from one of our newest members, John Blackburn, who um, a lot of you out there listening hopefully know know him as one half of half 
of the Cap Catastrophes, that uh, singing duo, husband and wife singing duo on Twitter. Um, and um, we've uh, we've gotten a, a bit close as Twitter friends, um, hint, hint. Um, and uh, hope to see and hear a lot more from uh, the both of them fairly soon here, hint, hint. Um, and uh, he he did the thing, I think it was uh, against the Rangers, uh, but he posted a, something on Twitter where he said he did, he had, uh, I forget what he said he had besides the pecan pie, but it was a big barbecue sandwich or something of that nature and, and the pecan pie and and he thought his stomach was going to burst. And I saw that and I figured, why don't I go ahead and do, go back and do yeast mode or something like something crazy, but but themed against the team that we're playing with. So the night of the Buffalo game, I ordered from Buffalo Wild Wings. And and uh, if you didn't see the Facebook post, I ordered a, 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 a Buffalo chicken sandwich and some Buffalo flavored wings. And um, boy, did I pay for that later. <laughs> uh, in more ways than one, but yes, the Caps yeah. pulled out a win. So I thought, okay, I'm on to something here. And then the next game was against St. Louis, and St. Louis is known for their toasted ravioli. So yeah, yeah. Miss, Mrs. Blue Liner help, helped me out there by uh, cooking up a batch of that and uh, put putting it in some uh, homemade meat sauce. Um, that one, that game didn't work out. They lost that game. Um, but we decided to roll with it, and the, the next game against Minnesota, she she made something called hot dish, which is apparently big in the in the upper Midwest where she grew up uh, for the Minnesota thing. And that that sucker has um, roasted green beans, um, this this homemade uh, meat and gravy sauce, oh. and t- tater tots on the top, and it's 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 actually pretty good. I was gonna say, um, well, and if Jenny's making it, I'm sure it was outstanding. So yeah, yeah, it 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 was, and uh, but unfortunately, uh, that game, of course, they lost. Also, um, and uh, so that brings us to the first game of the week that we're covering. That's the one against the Blue Jackets. Um, and I looked up them. They have they have a um a, a, a they're known for something called the Ohioan hot dog, where it's it's this big ass hot dog that's split in half and um they they put relish mustard and something called corn relish on it spicy corn Mm -hmm. relish and i actually managed to find a jar of that really stuff yeah so so uh yeah i ordered a, a, a a hot dog from five guys of all places with with bacon on it just to give it kind of a dmv kind of accent to it and I, I slapped some corn relish on that sucker after cutting it in half. And that's what you see in the picture. Um, and they also have, they also do something out there called um, a Buckeye donut. And all it is basically is, is a chocolate covered donut with peanut butter on top. Okay. And I decided to eat that too. And yeah, I, I, I know I'm, I probably shouldn't be so, who I am uh, with stuff that's going on with me shouldn't be eating that kind of stuff um especially at my age and yeah um but you took one for the team but yeah took one for the team and that one of course looked like for a while um they were gonna win <laughs> they were in control of it and then it got kind of wild and then they went to overtime and then Not so yeah much. Not so much, and they ended well. They they came away with a loser point, but yeah, that, oy. and and uh, the CBJ as I'm pretty sure they are now close to it anyway. The worst team in the league, and yeah, that that one that one was a kick in the old gonads. Yeah, I mean the only only plus was I got the bobblehead that night. I mean, yeah, that was that was. <laughs> That Everything was the celebration. Was... Yeah, that yeah. that of course was the game where they celebrated Ovechkin passing uh, Gordy Howe for right. uh, with with eight oh two. So um, they had the like, pregame ceremonies for that. Did you see like the Robbie Grace had a point? Like anytime the Caps do have some sort of celebratory night, uh, it seems like they start off I, like they start off with bang and then not. <laughs> um, and I didn't really think about it. And then I was like, ah, you know what? Maybe there's something to that, that they just, I don't know. I don't know if they, they, 
who knows? I, I don't know what it was. I mean, Stephanie said it was a, an amazing ceremony, but um, what happened? It's like you would think all of the all the feels would be there to be like, we're going to do this. And, and it really felt like we were. <laughs> and then we didn't. So, well, so. I think what happened, what happened was they started out so great and they jumped out to a lead so big so early that they forgot to play the rest of the game mm-hmm. and they let them back in. And also, I, I don't know that I've ever seen them have a, a, some sort of ceremony like that and then end up winning the game. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what Robbie was saying, that anytime they have some sort of ceremony prior to dropping the puck, they don't usually win. And yeah, I the only... I the only one I, about it. <laughs> yeah, the only one I can think of where they did win was when, when Backstrom got the 1,000 points and they had the apples. Oh, and, right, yeah. And the, the one time... Because the, they, they scored... Backstrom scored a goal or something like that and, and, or, or something happened. And then they, they, they had these souvenir apples mm-hmm. with, with, you know, Backstrom's you know, personal logo on it for the 1000. And they, they all got thrown on the ice. Uh, I do. I do remember that. I do remember that. Yeah. But still, it's just, it's just weird that it's, it coincides for me with when they have to play an afternoon game. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah, it it that's that's never a fun thing. The next game, which was the win, we're gonna uh, win against Chicago. We're gonna make that our focus game, um, but not before I mention the fact that I went and decided for this one um, that I was gonna go uh, order from um, Pizzeria Uno and um, decided to do the Chicago deep dish style pizza for this one. That one worked out. Because it was a six-one win, we'll uh, go over the details on that one in in a bit. And for last night's game, which I think will be the last one I, of these, I do because yeah, that didn't work out either. I decided to go in a bit of another different direction and do the the Yingling Lager, which I didn't even finish. Oh uh, yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> I, I love I, Yingling. Yeah, it's um, well, it's 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 Pittsburgh, but it's also a, a bit of a sentimental thing because it was um, um, my good friend uh, Becca Thomas, um, uh, the Caps fan who passed away a few years mm-hmm. ago. Yeah, uh, her favorite beer. So oh, I figured okay. I'd go with that That's one as idiot. well. But yeah, but I was I was so that last period, I was watching the game so intensely, I forgot I even had the beer there and. Yeah. Um, that doesn't ever happen to me, but. Well, I mean, it <laughs> was, uh, I mean, good. think about it. I, they're, they're, they were down, they were down three, nothing to start the last period. Yeah. You know? Oh, and, I know. I know. No, I'm just saying like. And it looked, look, it looked bad. And then they come back. Tommy starts to come back and then Ovechkin yeah. and then Strom ties it. And names. it was just, I mean, it was, it was really, it was a really magical run and just a little taste of what this team can do when, when they're focused and they're committed. And yeah, <clears throat> then and the really, so really bad thing happened. And of all about- people, well, I don't want to say of all people, cause it could have been Crosby. It could have been Latang, fucking Malkin. Hi. Yeah, yeah, the guy, the guy that uh, we all love to hate and lurch. Yeah. <laughs> good name for him. Um, yeah, puts it away at uh, with uh, uh, eighty seconds left. And look, I, I'm I'm not going to waste time by you know describing in detail what happened. If you saw the game, you know what happened. If you didn't see yeah. the game. It's, no. it's still available for replay. <laughs> it's it's uh, ju- just go on uh, Washington Capitals Twitter and uh, you, you'll I'm sure you'll have an idea of what happened. Right. And and um, how it how things came to be, as it were. And I'm, so we're not going <clears> to <throat> we're not going to do to delve into that because I'm sure like uh, you and I were talking about before we went on just now, I'm sure there was a lot of venting going on last night among caps fans and 
I actually, I don't know if anybody else caught it, but I was actually on a, a Twitter space, um, which is an impromptu uh, live verbal discussion in, in a Twitter room with Jeff Kravitz. And um, Jeff, uh, we're hoping to have on here in in a few weeks. Um, That's cool. Yeah, so uh, he's he's another one of our uh, new new add-ons, but uh, we've been Twitter friends for a while, and uh, he's he's been a Caps fan for a while, and and we had a nice long discussion about the game and what went wrong and what's gone wrong this season, and <clears throat> yeah, he's 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 got some ideas about what the team needs to do. So I I the plan long term is to have him on for uh, the last week of the regular season to kind of do a post mortem as we always do. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so he'll be there for that. Um, but let's get back to the Chicago game. Uh Um, so we'll go over the scoring there. Um, Connor Sherry made it one, nothing caps 10, 15 in the third with his 14th. Um, and like, before I go on, like everybody's opinions on whether or not what, what they should do with him, because. Um, I think everybody's kind of mixed. Um, A lot of people want him to stay and a lot are thinking, well, he might be better off somewhere else, Uh you know, and, you know, because does he fit in the long term plans? Does he not? And I I don't think there's really a consensus. So I want to hear from the listeners in in some way, pardon me, uh, whether how they feel about Sherry. Um, I think he deserves a chance, but I'm also the same mind that, you know, maybe he can flourish with another team. Um, I can see him fitting in with like a, a maybe a, a Minnesota or someplace like that, kind of like Mojo. They play the same style, so you know, I, I think. I'd, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to give him a chance. I feel like he he was awesome in the beginning, and and then we didn't really hear much about him. There's a little less chirping and comments, and and I think the last couple of games, whether it's because he realizes like holy shit i need to (laughs) step up or do something or who knows what um kind of seeing we're kind of seeing the the kind of sherry that we saw before and i'd like to i'd like to give him a a chance but the one who scores um about 15 seconds later is one that i could probably do without yeah, and uh, that was uh, Mr. Mantha, who got his 11th of, of the year, um, 18 seconds later, sorry, as, yeah, sorry. As, it, <laughs> as it turned out, uh, gave, and that, <laughs> ironically enough, that was the game-winning goal for that game. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, enough ir- at this point. <laughs> irony of ironies, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but we're, we're not going to get into a long discussion about that. Yeah. Um, Ovechkin and Kuznetsov on the assist there. Um, and then Nick Dowd in the second period made, uh, got his 13th, made it three, nothing Washington, uh, Lexi Protus with an assist on that one. Uh, Caps go to the power play a few minutes later. Backstrom gets his sixth of the year. Strom and Carlson on the assists. Was this Carlson's first game back? Uh, or was it, it the Columbus game? It was the Columbus game. Okay. Because he also scored. Right. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, he got. No, I think this one was his first game back. Let me double check. Let me see. I should have known. Uh, oh, no. You know, sorry, you're right. The you're Chicago, right. This... right the, so it was the Chicago game because, uh, yeah, yeah, he got, he got he the got goal the and the assist yep. in this game. And he played. I, you know, and, and we talked about it on Sports on the Hill. I didn't think that he should be getting too many minutes. Well, um, they had him out there um, just a hair over 20 minutes. Um, I, but I look, I'll give him credit. He didn't look out of place. He didn't look like he'd lost that much of a step. Um, you could tell he was still working on his timing with his shot mm-hmm. and his passing. But right. other, other than that, well, he didn't. He didn't look too bad out there, not this game anyway. And uh, so, yeah, he gets he gets his ninth. Uh, first coming back on the power play makes it five nothing. Um, Blackhawks get one early in the third. Nikita Zaitsev his first of the year, and then Captain strikes uh, for his forty first, unassisted. 
um, to ice the game at 6-1. And, I mean, yeah, Chicago's another one that's a bottom feeder in the league for sure. But uh, this this was definitely good for a confidence builder. And I, I think a lot of us were feeling pretty good after this game and uh, heading into the next one, which was Pittsburgh. And, you know, finally they got, you know, they'd gotten everybody healthy back again. And then, of course, Milano went down um, before the next game. But, uh, yeah, John Carlson was actually made first star of the game for yeah. this one. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Like I said, he didn't look like he lost much of any any sort of an edge. He looked like he he was uh, back in form. And, and so. that's, to me, you know, I've got a huge amount of respect for a player like that because he, he came back. He wasn't withholding. And, you know, it wasn't like, oh, maybe not. Uh, didn't look tired. Looked like he had done what he could do training-wise while he was healing, if that makes right. sense. Like, he it stayed does. with it. And I think that that, um, you know, that's what the team needed. It would have been fantastic if they, you know, they could have put off the win, but whatever. They can't get into that, I know. Well, yeah. they pulled off this win, but you know what I mean. But like well, the, Right, the, the, the next game, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, staying on this game, Power Play mm-hmm. had four chances converted on two of them. He factored in both goals. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, he's very, very important to the Power Play. So that, yeah, that was a, that was a big boost. Um, and seriously, good for him for scoring. Like, holy shit! Like, you know, yeah. I, I like I like moments like that because I know there was a lot of doubters and a lot of like, you know, we we've already had this discussion, you know, well, way too many <clears throat> times. But look, I'm just saying, I I had a res- I have a respect level for a player, any player that can come back from an injury as horrific as what. Carlson went through and and looked like he hasn't missed much time and the, and he's able to come back and do what he needs to do and score so I was I was glad to see that I was too to be honest and <laughs> I I was look I'm I have not changed much as far as my opinion on Carlson unfortunately mm-hmm. um as was seen on one of the goals from last night's game. He's still right. a liability. I'm sorry. But okay. you get you get so much more, you get so much more from him than just playing defense or his attempt to do so. Right. Um but sometimes that doesn't outweigh the the negatives. Okay. Now now last night last night um I think you know, it was it was uh, the play I'm talking about was him trying to make a, a a cross ice pass that went a bit awry and and led to a turnover, and that I can sort of forgive. The stuff that really turned me against him happened in last year's playoffs and against Florida. That that really magnified you know the problems that that he had playing defense. And that's unfortunately that's not going to go away, right? Um, and realistically, they're not they're not getting rid of him because I don't think anybody's going to take that contract on, not right. even yeah. not even with with any sort of retention. So, I guess I, what what I'm hoping for is you know an, an Orlov like resurgence from him for the remainder of his contract. And then, right. and then he can retire. I, I think he's got like three years left. So, um, yes, because it was, yeah. Didn't didn't his contract come right after the after the cup? Yeah, and it was like eight um, years. Or so it wasn't right. It was an eight year contract, and I'm pretty sure this was his fifth year. I'm checking through cap friendly now. And yes, he is signed all the way through 2025, 26. So wow. after, okay. after this year at a cap hit of 8 million, he's uh, on the team barring a trade or some other act of God, maybe, I don't know. Um, 
he's uh, he's on the Capitals for those remaining three years. Um, but but again, obviously he contributes to the offense. And as they say, if you're scoring and you've got the puck, then the other team can't score because they don't have the puck. So I get that logic, but unfortunately he can still be a liability at times. So Mm -hmm. my thought is, okay, keep him on the power play units, but don't. And that's also why I'm hoping he does. He gets less minutes because I mean, and we talked about this on sports on the Hill. Temporal artery. Yeah, when you have an injury that involves those two words, Jesus. and I'm not being hyperbolic here, temporal artery, you never want to hear any that as any part of any injury. No. Oh my God, no. So I think, I think uh, Carol was the only one who was saying, oh, let him play, let him play, let him play. And like, yeah, that's doesn't, isn't always how it works, but right. Um, mm. you know, it, it it worked out in the in the game. He came back, and and uh, I don't think he had a bad game other than that turnover against Pittsburgh. I, I think he still had a pretty good game, and you know, he he looks good. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain for right now. I'm just saying, look, you know, you, you're gonna have to take the good with the bad still because he's only gonna get older. And that means he's very slowly going to start to get worse than than what he yeah. is. Now it's obvious they still need him, but yeah, you know, just just saying this is it's it's reality. So, um, okay, so time to address the elephant in the room, and that's the uh, the Caps playoff chances. Um, I don't want to go into this too much either, but. Technically, the Capitals have not been mathematically eliminated yet, but the loss against Pittsburgh was probably their best chance to get back in the race and suffice it to say, time's running out and running out very quickly. Capitals have uh, two, three, three. Okay, so they have eight games left. Uh Um, And... Pittsburgh has nine games left and I did some quick math and Pittsburgh is going to have to lose at a minimum four of those nine games and lose. And I'm talking, lose them outright. Right. Right. In regulation, not, not go to overtime and get a point. They, they have to go four games at least without getting a point at all. And even if they do that, the caps still have to win. Probably. Well, not probably uh, the majority of their games, they have eight left. Um, if they want a shot, they're going to have to win six of them. And and here's their opponents coming up next week. It's the Islanders and Tampa Bay in a back to back or a home road back to back. And that finishes the month of March <sighs> week after that. It's uh, back to cap one. It's another matinee against the Rangers that Sunday. And then Thursday up to Montreal and then back home on Saturday night at cap one against Florida. Um, All of those games, except for Tampa and the Rangers, they should win. I would think. And then the last week of the season uh, back home Monday night against the Islanders and then Boston up to Boston in another home road back to back. And then they finish the season Thursday night, April the 13th, against the Devils. Mm-hmm. It's just tough. The, the, but, I mean, we've seen them come out on top and kick ass against, you know, top opponents. But we've also seen them lose to the bottom of the bottom. And yeah. that's where, you know, fans get we have a right to be frustrated but it's that's just it you know we're fans you're frustrated you still support them i still watch every game i'm not going anywhere you know it's like come on and let, let, i just hope it, that people will will ride this out because it's not you know we have it's not like we've been consecutively awful for the last decade it's like yes we got the cup and 
you know, let's, let's look at, you know, things since then and changes that could be made, you know, over the, um, before the next season starts. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still going to watch. There's no reason not to. I'm not, I'm not giving up on, on the season per se, but um, I think it's realistic to, you know, start thinking more towards next year. And, and I'm, I'm hanging on to my optimism, but it's hang on. It's hard. (laughs) I'll put it this way. Um, The optimism I have left I'm putting into next year. Yeah. Um, I think, I think this team has a very good chance to surprise and do a lot of good things next season. If they do some things right. And I'm not going to talk about all of that here, but um, if they make some certain moves, uh, I think they've got a good shot at at least maybe being something of a sleeper contender next year. Mm -hmm. So, if no, only it, the GM would just ask our opinion on PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, if if only <laughs> if only he would start listening to this little podcast of ours. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell, Brian? Come on now. Why? Why not? Sure. Why um, are you not listening to our opinions and and our our yeah and our yeah, we, passion? We we've only got <laughs> ten watt power in a million watt world. Yeah, why not? Um. Yeah. But but seriously, uh, I mean, continue to watch the games. If if you're you on the other side of the speakers, the earbuds, you, the what have you, because yeah. as has been said, you learn as much, if not more, uh, when you lose than you do when you win. Uh-huh. So you want to continue to be a better fan, which is what we always strive for. Continue watching this game. Look for tendencies. That, that they have look for the things that they do right and what they do wrong. And it, it's like Sammy said last week, you know, watch them, especially when they have those battles in the neutral zone uh-huh. um, in open ice and along the boards, watch for that stuff and see how they play when they don't have the puck. And when they do have the puck, Use this time to learn as much as you can about the game. And that's, I, I think that's what we as fans need to start doing so we can make, you know, a better and informed judgment and, and keep our voices nice and loud so that, you know, management and whoever can't drown us out and, and wants to, <laughs> if they do want to listen to us, uh, you know, but you know, we, we, We'll still have a voice. Just make that voice more informed is, is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to get at. And you can, and the best way to do that is to continue to watch the games. So it may be hard to watch at times, but keep on watching the games, keep on back in this team. And, you know, we, we will, it's, it's been kind of a crummy season, but you know, you got, like I said, you got to take the good with the bad. So, mm-hmm. So speaking of fans and uh, new listeners and new supporters, um, we have one who just signed on to our Facebook page, and um, we're gonna. This is still Women's History Month, so it's the last week. Uh, very special young lady by the name of Taylor Renee, and uh, Anna, you happen to know her very well, yes. and I understand she has um, a very interesting story worth telling with regard to the cap. So I will let you go ahead and take care of that. Ah, sure thing. So Taylor lives across the street um, from me and her family has been just those kick-ass neighbors that, that you want to have. And, you know, her parents are amazing and it's like, Hey, do you have this? Can I borrow this? Can you look out for my place? And, and we do the same for them. And so They've been a really, really fantastic people. Um, and so I got a message from her mom asking if I could run over and, and get something for Taylor yesterday. Um, and I had a chance to, to chat with her and hang out with her, which I love because she, I just think she, she's just like one of those people that you is so easygoing and so fantastic. 
And she started to tell me how she has just become a fan of hockey. And I was like, oh, awesome. And she's like, yeah. She's like, and, you know, watching, you know, trying to watch some games and um, interested in becoming a Caps fan and, and all that kind of stuff. So we spoke a little bit about, um, you know, just the games and, and things that she had read about and questions that she had kind of thing. And I mm-hmm. guess her best friend is a Caps fan whose boyfriend is a Flyers fan. <laughs> um, so I'm like, well, that's interesting. And I said, it's, I don't know if that's easier to swallow than if he was a Pens fan, but either way, like, <laughs> um, but anyway, so they're like really, uh, you know, into, um, into hockey. So, which is really great. And she's like, I really want to go to a game and kind of figure out what's going on. And I was like, well, you know, your parents know, cause they joked about me screaming during the Stanley cup playoffs. That, like we can hear you <laughs> across the street. <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, like, you know, well, I'll, you know, if you have any questions or anything I can help with, or if you want to, you know, watch a game or something like that. So she said, well, you know, did my mom ever tell you that I met Alex Oveshkin? Like, what? <laughs> mm. uh, no. And she said, yeah, it was a couple of years ago. I guess she was um, going to a doctor's appointment and out by Tyson's and there was like a sushi restaurant and she had like some time to kill before her appointment. So she went in there and had something to eat and she had happened to be on crutches and she went out to her car and it was in the handicap because she had, you know, she was on crutches and here's Oveshkin's car. She didn't know. They had no idea who this guy was, <laughs> but he had parked in the handicap spot, like in the crosswalk oh. and she couldn't, yeah, she couldn't get her door open. So she um, was like, Oh, okay. This is a problem. Cause you know, like if this had happened and if you weren't on crutches, you'd be like, Oh, fucking annoying. I'll go through the other side and, you know, gracefully go over the center consult and get into my seat, but she couldn't do that. So she went back into the restaurant and said like, Hey, listen, there's this car out there. And she described it and they're like, Oh, like that is Alex Oveshkin's car. She's like, I'm sorry, who? <laughs> <laughs> like who? Like, why do I care? Kind of thing. And they're like, we can't ask him. She's like, um, okay, well I can. <laughs> who is he? Where is he? And I will. So she said she went over to him at the table and I don't know who was with, you know, like she wouldn't know either. Cause she didn't know who he was. Um, but he was at this restaurant with, and there were people around and, you know, of course everyone's a little standoffish cause I'm sure he was, you know, <laughs> wherever he goes, people are going to approach him. And she just said, listen, I'm sorry. I've, I, you know, I parked here and your car's here. Um, I need you to move it (laughs) because I can't get in and I got an appointment and she said he was oh my god like super polite I'm so sorry he went out moved his car and then he says to her this is the oh my god like the fans who listen to the show are gonna be like oh my god and she's like okay thank you and he's like I'm so sorry um I don't know do you like do you want an autograph and she's like why (laughs) (laughs) Um, okay, I guess. I don't know who you are, but okay. <laughs> you know, I don't think she said that to him, but she was just kind of like, why would I want your autograph? But okay. And like, he wrote something, you know, signed his name and, and whatever. And she went on her way and came back and, and she told her friend, who's the Caps fan. Um, she's like, yeah, I, I don't know, Alex Ovechkin. And, you know, of course the friend's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you, you but he signed something. <laughs> so I was trying to tell her, I'm like, well, that's what the bobblehead. She's like, well, I saw the picture of the bobblehead. She's like, I just didn't know, you know, who he was. And she's like, but, but in that sense, we were like, you know, it's kind of cool that like she even said it could have gone two different ways. Like he could have been a complete asshole and been like, you know, don't bother me. I'm Alex Ovechkin. Or could have been like, I am so sorry. Let me, you know, you know, that was wrong of me. And that's who he was. And I was like, you know, that's the kind of stuff as a fan, like you want to hear like the cool stuff out, out of the rink. Um, but when she said that yesterday, I was like, you just gave it away. She's like, oh, I didn't know who he was. 
<laughs> so yeah, so we we have plans to. Uh, I think it's a week from today. I think it's the Rangers game at like one, one in the afternoon. We're gonna watch it together. Um, and she decided to to join our our face group page, which is fantastic. So Taylor and I are gonna be um, rooting from across the street next week. Very very cool. So yeah. so so we have not only. Uh, a, a, a fan of the team, but hopefully potentially a, a, a fan of the podcast, thanks in no small part to Alex Ovechkin. Right. And, and because uh, he, he righted a, a wrong, uh, admittedly a, a wrong that he did, but he, yeah. he fixed it as, as best as he could. And that's, uh, look, it all goes to show, look, you know, these are still, these guys, yeah, they're not getting the job done in the in the in the standings this year, but at heart, you know, like like Sammy Silber was saying last week, you know, the, at heart they they do the best they can and the, and they're good people at heart. So yeah. that's that's really what it comes down to and why we should all still support this team. Um, so yeah, good, good on Taylor and, uh, yeah, hope to, uh, hope to, uh, have her grow in the, in the fandom of the game and, uh, and everything she does. So that, that's, that's an awesome, awesome story. So just want to throw one last thing out there, um, before we wrap it up for this week about that. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, again, still, uh, being women's history month um if you're listening and it is before late evening on the 26th I want to remind everybody that uh tonight uh at nine o'clock the premier hockey federation which is one of the two women's professional hockey leagues is having their isabel cup final and the isabel cup of course their championship isabel um why is it called the isabel cup because isabel was lord stanley's daughter so oh, she was I, actually, I didn't know that. That's really yep, cool. Yep. She's uh, she, and she was actually a hockey fan. She was out there with her dad and her brothers Very playing cool. the sport when they first discovered it in the, uh, with the winter carnivals in what was then the dominion of Canada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and of course, Lord Stanley was the, the governor general of, of Canada at the time. And uh, he, he was the one of course that created the Stanley cup to celebrate the uh, top team in all of hockey right. in, in, in Canada at the time. Well, uh, his daughter was as big a fan as he was of the sport. So when the league created their trophy, they named it after her. So now, you know, now, uh, now you've uh, had that history lesson, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're having their championship tonight. It's the Toronto six, Against the Minnesota Whitecaps, uh, I've always loved the uh, the Minnesota Whitecaps. Always been a fan of them, not just because they're they're the Caps, haha. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they they uh, got a lot of good players on on their team, and uh, I I don't know, I, I just I I love the way they play. So I'm I'm rooting for them tonight. That starts oh. at nine Eastern. It's going to okay. be on ES, ESPN two tonight for okay. anyone interested in watching. And uh, I think it's going to be a real good game. They have a one-game series. Uh, it's not not a series. It's a one-game playoff for the Cup itself. So uh, tune in for that, and I uh, hope you catch that. I think it'll be a game worth watching. So, uh, all right, we're going to stop it here and uh, keep the faith, Caps fans, and uh, hopefully you'll all uh, you know hang on to that faith. Uh, Anna, I think you had also one last uh, announcement you wanted to make. To let yeah. our listeners know. I know. So this will actually be my last show of this season, which is crazy. Um, but I have spring break coming up and um, a friend's coming to visit from California over the next couple of weeks. And I'm so excited about that. So I am happily going to give my airtime to, um, to Cheryl Ann Forrester, which I appreciate her stepping in. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is my last one, but it's not like you won't see me or hear me or, whatever on um on our facebook page during the games yep and and fear not the mermaid isn't going anywhere she will no, be no ready ready to rock uh come come next season exactly uh, well rested and uh, ready to go for that <laughs> so that's that's not not a problem it's we're yep. just letting every everyone know ahead of time 
because uh, uh, yeah, she's got she's got some plans, and this this season's been kind of rough on a lot of us. And uh, you know, it's sometimes it's 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 good to you know take some extra time. And uh, she's been planning this for a while, so just wanted to let everybody know that you know uh, a, a slight lineup change, but only temporarily. Yeah. But uh, the full crew will be ready to go for next year. No problems here. We're still we're still going to go at it in time for 2024. So if you're not. <laughs> All right. So for the mermaid Anna Knox, this is the blue liner on point signing off and reminding you that I once held a job at an Indian restaurant and they were so protective about their flatbread, their special flatbread recipe that they made me sign a legal agreement that I wouldn't share it. It was a non-disclosure agreement. Mm. Oh, sorry, Gal. This is like season six <laughs> for us. Eh. Can't blame sorry. a guy for trying. No, you can't. Hallelujah, and let's go, Caps. Go, Caps. <laughs> This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Power Play Point Podcast. Thanks for listening.